I will smash your face into your face. All right, YouTube. Sometimes I'm so desperate to make a video for you that I don't have time to walk four minutes to my dedicated YouTube studio. I have to do it from my home setup. That's how much I love you. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a digital crash zoom. So this is for people who want to achieve a crash zoom, but don't have the budget to be able to do it on set so can't get a par focal lens or a focus puller or something like that. Now, there are a lot of tutorials online as to how to achieve this effect, but for me, none of them get it quite right and they never look totally like a crash zoom. So I'm gonna show you a method today that I think is a lot more convincing. This for me is just that little bit better than the technique that most people are using and it doesn't take that much more effort. Let's get into it. So as you can see, I've already got my comp set up with my close up and my wide above it. And the first thing I'm gonna work on is the close up. Now, the majority of other tutorials start with the wide and they scale the wide up until it matches the size of the close-up, and that's pretty much it. They add some motion blur to it, and that's the whole effect. But what we're trying to do is make our crash zoom a little more realistic, so we're going to work on the close-up. So I'm gonna hit S to bring up my scale, and Shift P to bring up my position parameters, and we know that we are gonna overlay between the wide and the close-up. So what I wanna do is go about three frames forward so I'm the close-up starts at about 20 frames in so if I go to 23 frames I'm going to keyframe my scale and my position then I'm going to go forward five frames and keyframe the scale and position again I'm going to scale up to about 125 then I'm going to go forward another second and keyframe my position I'm going to turn my wide off so that I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to keyframe my position to be over here. So generally speaking on a crash zoom there is some movement after the zoom so that's what we're doing here is adding some movement so the zoom transition will actually finish around here but then there's going to be some movement because it just makes it feel like a more realistic crash zoom. So we're going to highlight these two keyframes, go into our graph editor and smooth this out a little bit so that basically it's going to come to a slow stop once we've zoomed in something like this. Then we're going to turn our wide back on. I've already got the scale up there, so I'm just going to hit Shift P to bring up the position at the same time. On 20 frames, I'm going to keyframe both of them. I'm going to go forward five frames, keyframe them again, and then I'm going to go back two frames, turn the opacity down on my wide shot so that I can see what I'm working with. And at this point, I'm going to scale it up to match my close up reposition it. Now, a lot of other tutorials will tell you that this doesn't need to be close. I personally think it does, because if you watch a crash zoom done in camera, it is absolutely seamless. There is no frame where it doesn't look like the same footage. So that's what we're trying to achieve here. So let's get this as close as we can. And that looks pretty good. And let's go back one frame and just check what that's looking like. Okay, that's looking good. So now I know I want to hit Shift T to bring up my opacity on the wide shot, crank it up to 100 at this point, and then we're going to fade out the wide shot here. So we're going to take the opacity all the way down to zero. Okay, that's already looking much better. To smooth this out even more, we're going to click on motion blur on both layers. Make sure that your motion blur icon here is also blue so that we're seeing the motion blur. And let's see what that looks like. Now that's not bad. What we can do to help make it a little bit better is at this point on the close up, we're going to add some blur because again, one of the things that you see is that when you're doing this in camera, you never quite hit the focus bang on. So we're going to keyframe our blur there. We're going to go forward a few frames. We're going to crank up the blur to around 25. Then we're going to go forward another second. In fact, we'll use our keyframe down here as a guide and we'll take the blur all the way down. And that should help blend those two shots together as we're doing the zoom transition. Let's see what we've got. Now that's looking pretty good to me. So the last thing I'm going to do is add in a new adjustment layer 
and go up to effect and add in some Lumetri color just to give it a bit of a grade. So we'll grab a lot, go into creative. I'm going to whack an eternal look on there. Take that down to about 50% up the whites a little bit, up the shadows a little bit. And this should be our final result. Let's watch it back. Looking pretty good. Now that only took a couple more clicks and for me, it was totally worth it. It's a much more convincing replication of the crash zoom effect. So go and have fun creating. But before you do, why not watch this video that's got more tips and tricks for After Effects and Premiere. See you in the next one. Peace.